much political will is there from promises Suga, given especially that fossil fuel imports in Japan has been increasing? Well, it's nice to see you again, and uh, thank you for having me today. Well, the uh, you know it was such a you know the uh, the big statement, and uh, you know to many of Japanese, including the the people in uh, uh, in a public sector as well as the private sector, uh, received that as a surprise. But the uh, you know Japan actually did a lot of like uh, you know the climate uh, friendly uh, you know the, uh, the actions. Over the last several years, and uh, Japan actually, you know, they uh, turned out to be only two countries among G7 countries who has been successfully uh, reducing carbon emission for the last five years. So uh, there was a prelude for that, but the uh, you know it was kind of came as a little bit surprise, and uh, I think the, uh, the it will make a significant impact on how the Japanese political and uh, business leader will react to that. So, uh, you know, a lot of things will uh, coming up onto the surface, but the, uh, it will take a little bit of time for you to hear all the concrete plans uh, to how to achieve that. In your view, though, how will Japan's net zero pathway look like? What are the implications? And, you know, I'm just wondering as well what nuclear will play, the role of nuclear in Japan's uh, carbon target. Well, you know, the uh, as I said, it, it just uh, you know the came uh, just short period of time ago. So uh, and uh, uh, this year, uh, Japan is going to uh, go into the uh, the five year cycle of uh, revision of the uh, the energy mix policy. So uh, this is exactly the time that the it should come in, uh, so that the uh, the Japanese the uh, the policy and uh, the policy maker. And uh, Japanese, you know, the ministries, including Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, to uh, have a serious discussion on how to achieve that. And uh, I really uh, welcome uh, the Mr. Suga's uh, the announcement because it will set the uh, the basic uh, scenario, in other words, goal, so that the Japan can revise and how to, you know, decide how to approach energy policy. And as you mentioned, you know, whether we will continue to use the, uh, the nuclear, uh, you know, the, and also the how we can revise our uh, policy on a call. All of those have to be revised. And uh, Mr. Suga said in his statement that the, uh, the our call policy will be fundamentally uh, revisited. Here, how does it fit, fit into economic planning here as well? I, I, because at the same time, you know, we've got uh, Suganomics taking over from Abenomics. Is it a different beast? Is it a different economic approach coming from the new, new prime minister? Sure. I mean, uh, you know, the prime minister Suga, uh, you know, the one his, uh, you know, prime minister, you know, the position by promising he will continue to work on the, uh, what the Mr. Abe started. But the, uh, the, if you look back, what the uh, the Abenomics meant was Abenomics consists of three arrows, you know, the uh, monetary easing, fiscal spending, and the deregulation. And the monetary easing, as everybody knows, not much they can do. And But the uh, fiscal spending, uh, there are some criticism the uh, Abe didn't do enough. But uh, now, because of COVID-19, all the major, you know, the governments do a lot of, like, fiscal spending, and the Japan is no exception. But the third arrow, deregulation, uh, it didn't, you know, the got through during the Abe's time. And uh, Suga is the best at delivering deregulation. And we already started some sign of its success. But the on the top of that, uh, you know, this uh, Prime Minister Suga's announcement on the uh, Japan will become competitive and a leader in a green economy will add the additional uh, arrow. Uh, to Suganomics. And so the, if you look at the Suganomics from the, uh, if you interpret from his statement, Japan is going to push the digitalization, a digital transformation of the economy, and including the very old, you know, the tradition of using seals and et cetera. And then, you know, now uh, uh, Suga added the other uh, uh, sustainable transformation as uh, the other uh, two, like a big thrust for the Japanese economic growth into the future, uh, up to the year 2030 and 2050. And of course, environment is going to be very much a part of all this, uh, this future, as, we, as we've been discussing. So it puts the E into ESG. Do you think that uh, pension funds such as your uh, previous uh, GPIF, where you were CIO, <laughs> do you think they're doing enough in regards to ESG investing? 
Well, I think the other, you know, when I, I was at the, the GFAF CIO, I, I tried to advocate the importance of the uh, you know, ESG. And uh, I think to, in some area that the GFAF took the, you know, the leadership uh, promoting that. And then now, you know, the, uh, the Japan has the, uh, you know, the most number of signatories of supporters for the uh, TCFD and the Task Force for a Climate Related uh, you know, Disclosure Recommendation. Uh, so I think it's, it's moving well. And also, the, uh, you know, the, this uh, announcement by Prime Minister Suga will also, again, hopefully, uh, even push the other, uh, you know, the Japanese, the financial community to uh, into the sustainable direction. But the uh, I understand that the uh, you know the Japanese institutional investors and the banks can do more, and uh, they should be in leading, uh, you know, promoting the sustainable finance following this the Mr. Suga's announcement, uh, uh, you know, this week. And you talk about how banks can do more. Banks are already tightening rules on lending for coal power projects. Do you think they'll do the same for gas-fired power projects? Well, the, uh, as I said, like we know that we need to, uh, uh, you know, evaluate all the possible sources of energy, right? So the uh, uh, nuclear shouldn't be no exception, and also the gas is more efficient in terms of the carbon efficiency than the uh, the coal, but still produces a lot of coal. Uh, but the, uh, at the moment, uh, the, most of the financial institutions are focusing on how to reduce coal dependence. And the gas, you know, the, uh, the probably uh, we should accept that the transition. Uh, but I heard from the, some of the investors now they are trying to reduce their exposure to gas as well. So at the end of the day, we will move into the, uh, the you know, the green, you know, the society has less dependence on the fossil fuel. And uh, finance and uh, the investors, uh, in, 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 by definition, like uh, they actually the, the accelerator for the change. So uh, if the, some, the, the banks realize the, uh, the gas is not, is not going to be a clean energy uh, anyway, they probably start reducing their exposure. But at this point of time, you know, it's very difficult to just move. You know, it's the, the energy transition that doesn't happen overnight. So the, uh, the gas probably remain for the time being as the other uh, realistic transition uh, energy source. And uh, I, I actually expect the, uh, the fewer, you know, the banks probably change the policy on a gas.